Hello friends, um, I would like to talk about some of the common problems people face when we do meditation. I would like to keep this video very short because I am just going to talk about one technique that really works out for me and I would like to share this piece of information with everybody who is doing meditation. One of the biggest problems people face when doing meditation is not able to pay attention to your breath. Not, not able to control their mind from frequent thoughts, new thoughts getting into your mind. And uh, after five or six minutes, they get irritated and they just get up saying that, you know what, I don't think I'll ever be able to do meditation because my mind is not going to a state where it is completely devoid of thoughts. I all, I'm getting more stronger thoughts. I'm getting more thoughts. So how am I going to meditate? Let's say if I'm just closing my eyes right now. I, in a minute, there are 50 thoughts coming in. Or there is one thought that I'm thinking about all the time. I should either focus on reducing the number of new thoughts that come to my mind. So let's say I close my eyes right now and sit down. My mind is first going to go to office. You know, um, have I completed the, the tasks that my boss wanted me to complete yesterday? Yes, out of 10 I have completed 4. What about the 6? I have not completed that. What is going to happen when my boss is going to ask about this tomorrow? What answer am I going to give? From that, another thought starts. It becomes a worry. And then I shift my attention. I try to take my mind away from that. And then now my mind says, oh, it's time to actually renew your car insurance or the date has already gone by. Why didn't you do so? You know, when are you going to do it? What if the cop catches you on the road? Your car insurance is not renewed. And then I worry about that. Now I tell my mind, now don't worry about you know, car insurance, don't worry about co com tasks that are not completed at workplace. We'll think about li that later. I'm going to meditate for 30 minutes right now and I don't want any thoughts. For two minutes, you're able to sit just like that. And the third minute, another thought comes. Uh, maybe there is a mosquito biting you. Now, this might be very strange to people who live in the Western world um, where you don't have mosquitoes, but uh, Believe me, in some countries, uh, you know, you still have problems with mosquitoes and uh, insects, um, especially when you meditate. And that's more, uh, that's more annoying, you know, because uh, you get distracted by some kind of a physical discomfort. And then what happens is your mind goes to another thought and from there to another thought. Now it worries about certain things. Now you are telling your mind to settle down. The moment you try to control your mind, it becomes more rebellious. Have you noticed that? People who meditate or people who have tried uh, meditation in their life would always say this. The moment you try to control something, your, your mind doesn't uh, listen to you. Only then you will know how unruly your mind is. Where you are giving suggestions to your mind. Come on, don't think anything. This half an hour, this 30 minutes that I am going to meditate, I'm not going to think about anything, but that's the time your mind would think about all the things that is happening in your life, all the problems that has not even happened till now, all the imagined fears that is going to come to you. That's when your mind is going to become more active. That's when you are going to have more thought traffic in your mind. The technique that I try um, is called self-suggestion. There are two ways to do this. One is, I tell my mind, don't think about, there are no new thoughts coming in my mind. When I say that to my mind, when I give a suggestion to my mind, immediately one thought comes. I am saying, I am going to ignore that thought. I know what that thought is. It can be related to work, it can be related to anything, any worldly activities. But I am going to say, okay, I have a thought right now. I am not going to focus on that thought right now. 
I'm just going to ignore it. And once you ignore it, that thought goes away. And that and then what happens is another thought comes there. It is going to occupy its place. And then I'm going to say, now there is a new thought. I know what that thought is. I'm not going to think about it right now. So when you start doing this, you start fighting with your mind. There are two ways to do this. One is to give time for your mind to settle down. When your mind becomes rebellious, sometimes you will have to go against your mind and say, I'm not going to think about that thought right now. You are going to you are going to defeat your mind. You need to kill your mind sometimes to achieve peace. So I'm not going to think about that. I'm not going to think about that. Yes, there is a new thought now. I know there is a new thought coming in. I acknowledge that thought, but I'm not going to pay attention. I'm not going to think about that because one thought will come. The primary thought becomes a secondary thought. From that secondary thought, another thought will come. So. 3 becomes 6, 6 becomes a 9, 9 becomes 100, 100 becomes 1000 and you have now 100,000 different types of thoughts at the same time. So I am not going to think about that. After 2 or 3 minutes what happens is your mind gets defeated. The racing mind gets defeated because it knows that even if a new suggestion comes you are not going to accept it and acknowledge it. You don't want to think about that. now. In a minute, let's say you had 10 thoughts coming in, it's going to become 6, it's going to become 4, it's going to become 3 and it, it may become 0. So one technique is to say that yes, I have a thought in my mind, I know it is a thought, I'm not going to entertain that thought. Two, sometimes I tell this to myself, keep your mind blank, you know, my mind is blank, I just think about a black screen that is before me or a white screen that is before me and the thoughts that come in reflect on that screen and I'm going to say I'm not seeing anything on the screen there are no thoughts there are no thoughts in my mind there is no new thoughts getting into my mind now you might say that when you say there are no new thoughts getting into my mind that itself becomes a thought but it is better than other thoughts that you that you worry about that is going to spoil your meditation to have a thought like I'm not going to think about anything, there are no new thoughts, is much better than thinking about your office or thinking about your bank balance or thinking about problems that you are never going to face in your life. This is, this is a, a safer thought to have because if you have this thought that I'm, my mind is blank, I'm not going to think about anything else, this doesn't become a secondary thought. It is a primary thought, it remains a primary thought. But once you start thinking about other things like work, once you start thinking about you know, your bank balance, your children, that primary thought will become a secondary thought and secondary thought will become, you know, there can be 10 new thoughts from that primary thought. So you keep thinking like this, my mind is blank, there are no new thoughts coming in, I'm going to block it, I'm going to block it. After a few minutes your mind will die, it is going to settle down like you know a river where you know, just somebody got into that river, that mud, that dirt, everything came up and now you are just coming out of the river and observing that river, that water and the dust and the dirt is going to settle down and you just have pure clean water on the surface of the river. So like that your mind has become quiet right now. It's become like a baby, a sleeping baby. There are no thoughts in the mind. There are no worries. You are not born in this world. You are not born. You are just enjoying bliss. And now you go to a state where you just focus on your breath. When the thoughts have gone down, the breathing rate is going to come down. So in a minute, let's say there were like 20 inhalations and exhalations. That's going to become 10. That's going to become 9. That's going to become 4. And yes, there is inhalation. There is exhalation. There is inhalation. There is exhalation. It is very smooth. The moment a thought comes, the exhalation or the inhalation uh, gets fluctuated depending on what thought you have. When you have more stressful thoughts, when you are over excited, the inhalation is going to be high because for the brain to process that particular thought, it might require more oxygen. Your brain, you know, needs 
energy and oxygen you know it consumes a lot of oxygen and how does it consume oxygen when the thought process is very high it needs more oxygen that's why when you are angry you know your inhalation and exhalation is very high you lose more of your pranic energy in that process so now you breathe little little inhalation little exhalation there is very little inhalation that happens very little exhalation that happens now your brain doesn't require a lot of oxygen because the thought process is completely stopped your respiration is going to become normal your breathing is going to become normal now this is the state where you need to focus your mind either on your spiritual master or any object of your meditation it you need not have uh, an object in your mind for meditation you need not have uh, you know a spiritual master you can still keep it empty but let's say here and there you're going to get some occasional thoughts then you can just focus on your spiritual master you can just focus on a sea a horizon sky uh, swami vivekananda i heard was meditating on the sky uh um, that is that was his style there are people who just meditate meditate uh, thinking about their spiritual master and uh, sometimes you get connection with your spiritual master he starts talking to you this is the state where the communication happens this is the state where the ancient rishis and yogis used to get knowledge about other worlds without using their senses right now they are gaining access to other worlds other worlds where there is a lot of esoteric knowledge out there there is a lot of divine knowledge out there which cannot be understood comprehended by your senses you get access to those worlds this is where you want to be now you are out of your material life your material world you are in spiritual world you are talking to your master and once you establish a connection with your spiritual master you get instantaneous responses to your questions you ask something you get an answer to it it can be god it can be spiritual master or it can be your own self that is now talking to you your own self that is talking to you or it can be your spiritual master you ask something there is no time here there is no time here it is very important the moment you establish connection with the divine there is no time there is no thinking time there is no time um, you know for the response to come you raise a question you immediately get an answer you raise a question you get an answer and it immediately touches your heart it is much more faster than the whatsapp that you use it's much more faster than the world's fastest internet connections and the most fastest servers the most fastest laptops and mobiles the most the world's most fastest processors what you have you you raise a question you get an answer you raise a question and you get an answer and those answers come from a different source from not from the stored knowledge that you have in your mind it comes from a different source and when you are in this state you develop your intuition about the future you get clarity about the future and this is the stage where great saints and the great seers in different parts of the world were able to connect or establish a connection with the god this is the state that you need to be in this is the real state you are you are not born you are not dead this is the kind of state you have maintained your mental equilibrium there are no disturbing thoughts there are no questions about your future there are no thoughts about your past this is the stage where you need to be in this is the stage where you get the actual knowledge this is the state where you experience peace this is the state where you always want to be in you do not want to come out of the stage this is the nectar the essence of meditation the if you experience this once then you would you would always be longing for that particular feeling if you have not experienced the state of bliss then you would not know 
you would think people who meditate are mere fools they are people who need to be on the psychiatrist's chair once you experience this bliss this knowledge this state then you would love to be in that state you would love to meditate this is the state from where all supernatural abilities start manifesting within yourself the knowledge about the future the knowledge about the past what is happening to me answers for all the worldly problems that you had your relationship issues your relationship with work because you are getting answers from a different plane not from the material plane so guys i have emphasized enough about this meditation techniques that is really worked out for me please practice this in your spiritual life and achieve a very very high state of bliss thank you very much for watching this video i'm going to give my email id below and if you have any questions you can always send an email to me thank you and wish you a very very happy and peaceful meditation bye